G'day, g'day, g'day. How are we all? Welcome back to TF Custom Shaving Brushes Workshop. I see we've got the usual crew in already. Sam's away for dinner. Razor's in. Brett's in. Who else is in? Let me get the... Um... We've got T-Man. T-Man, just before I forget, whilst you're here, um, I think it'll be a good move making this into a longer handle because I think it's going to show some really nice colour in this blank. Um, the lights will probably blow it all out here again, um, which I think it is. But you've seen the you've seen the photographs I sent. You still see a bit of colour in there. So I think it's going to be quite nice, and we've got a lot of nice colour in the barrel as well. Um, there's a section here which has still got resin in it. Now I think that will probably end up, the bulk of that will probably end up getting turned out at some stage. So that one will disappear and it should continue with the timber through there. Um, we've got a little bit here as well, but again I think that will turn out once we turn the shape into it and turn the blank down to size. Um, but I think going with a longer handle is um, really going to make, you're going to see this blank fully. Um, I think turning it into a chubby, you're going to lose a lot of the uh, the niceness in the blank, I think. So, um, good choice. If you've got any um, thoughts on what sort of shape you want, Mike, just let me know. And, um, and we'll get that locked in for you. As soon as I know I'm getting the knot. Now, I did speak to Sarjan and he did say that he was going to try and get me knots in about a week or so's time. That was about a week or so ago. So, I haven't heard nothing more yet, but um, I'll probably touch base with Sarjan sometime through the week and uh, just find out how things are um, progressing, okay? Now, I do have, um, I, ha I, I did take a bad rheumatoid flare up again last night um, and it stuck with me all night, so I had to take steroids again this morning with my normal medication, but this hand, my right hand, is all swollen up um, over in here. Um, so, and it's pretty sore, I've got no strength in it, but I should be okay to hang on to that, the dumb end of the uh, the tools, so we'll continue on and we'll see how we go with it. I've got a blank in here, now this is for a fella, um, David, um, it's got the um, Myrtle Burl, um, sort of bird's eye burl on the bottom, and we've put a black resin top on the top. Um, and just let me get this sorted out here. Um, and he's, he's gave me a particular style which will be similar to that one. Okay, so it's got the lotus type top on it and just a different shape on the bottom um, and then hollowed in like we, uh, we normally do. So that's the one, that's the shape that we're gonna sort of replicate on this one or there, thereabouts. So I've got a couple of pencil marks on it, we're ready to go. Obviously the barrel um, will be CA finished on this one. Um, but anyway, we'll see how we go. So we got Grey Dog. Grey Dog's in. Grey Dog, now you did ask me a couple of questions in the last stream and I didn't answer them. <clears throat> so I'll answer them for you now. Um, let me get that main screen back up. Now, you were asking me about these pin jaws. Okay, so you were asking me about the size. Now I know that they're about 25 mil in length that way. So if you're watching, 25 mil that way. Yep, exactly 25, and I think they're about 23 the other way. Um, yeah, 22, 23 mil the other way in, in diameter. So. Um, that's the size of the pin jaws. Okay, now the other thing we spoke about was you asked about um, texturing tools or spiraling tools. And I talked to you about the, the other one that I had. Well, I did eventually find it. This was the one I was telling you about. So as well as that Robert Sorby set, I've also got this one, which is a Henry Taylor tool. Now, I don't know if Henry Taylors are still being made. Um, but they called this the Decorating Elf. 
And if I zoom in on that from camera two, you'll see the um, you'll see the texture. And that's got a ball on it with a like a serrated edge in it. If you can see that in the shot there. Maybe if I get it down where the timber is, you'll see it better. And what happens is that rotates. And it's actually just stuck in a, in a long shaft and there's a magnet inside. And it, it clicks onto the magnet and it just pushes in like that. So when you're working it on the material, um, this rotates and that's what puts the texture in. And you can change different angles and different ways and that'll give you a different, a different look each time. Now that's the ball one. There is also another one that comes with it, if it's still available. I think there's three different colours. I, I couldn't get the second one when I tried to get it. So um, this one's like a, a cylindrical one. And again, it's got a serrated, a serrated edge, but you can use the point or you can use the side of them. Um, yeah, so it's called, it's a Henry Tools, Henry Taylor Tools, and it's called Decorating Elf. It's just I, um, I remembered after and I, and I thought, oh, I never answered those questions at Grey Dog, so I thought, I better, um, I better check them out and get back to you. So I thought, well, what better to do it than do it in the stream now? At least that way you can see the, uh, see the tool. Okay. And I think that was about all I had to answer from the previous one. So um, that's that out the way. So. We'll get started on this one. Now, I, I glued this one together um, a couple of days ago, two or three days ago, and uh, the blanks were a lot bigger, so I've cut them down. The acrylic part's still a little bit too large on this one at the moment, so um, I'm gonna take about 10 mil or so off the end there, and then we'll start um, we'll start shaping the handle, okay? Um, yeah, T-Man, I think longer handles the way to go, certainly, mate. You'll um, you'll see a fair bit of material in it that way, rather as chubby it down and, um, you know, lose lose a lot of the material, I think. Um, I'll still do the same as what I've done with um, razors, and I'll, I'll put the chameleon pigment, once we um, drill the hole for the handle in the top of the, the, the blank, um, I'll coat that with the uh, chameleon changing pigment as well. So it'll be similar to razors in the, in the top section so the knot will be set in the resin um, but you'll get the um, you'll get the color change in that as well and then you'll have a part part it'll be clear and then it'll be clear down one side of the handle and you'll see the chameleon changing uh, pigment changing color and I think we've got a little bit of silver holographic in that as well to give it a little bit of pop and a little bit of sparkle so it should be quite nice okay um, Yeah, there's a lot of them, mate. Some people even make their own, eh? But um, I've seen people making them out of, you know, cog wheels and stuff like that, you know? But, um, yeah, I mean, what I've got will, will do me. I don't need anything else. Yeah, Henry Taylor decorating... Um, Henry Taylor tools. Um, elf tool. It might be... Um, Actually, I think the one I'm thinking of that uh, closed up shop was uh, an Aussie uh, wood turning tool maker. Um, oh, p and I think it was, p and N Tools. I think they've shut up shop now, um, the, Aussie, the Aussie one, p and N. But um, you, you should still be able to get the Henry Taylor tools, I think. So um, if you wanted to follow that one up, you can follow up. I'm sure you'd find them. Okay, right, I'm gonna get started before I keep yabbing on anymore. And um, I'm just gonna. Uh, I just got problems with my hands, so you'll have to bear with me, guys. I'm gonna be a wee bit slow adjusting the um, the tool rest. Just with my right hand, I've got a bit of an issue. So, um, right, I'm just gonna take this material off. I'm 
slowly starting to catch up on the backlog, so um, I've still got a couple of handles to make yet, uh, but I need to cast them first, so we'll probably end up having a bit of a casting uh, video live, and then we'll have possibly another couple of brush ones in between times and then hopefully that'll be me starting to catch up on a few things so um, then we can maybe have a look at having a play with some other things eh? so I will be scheduling in a couple of other streams because I think this is the last one that I've got scheduled in um, so I will be scheduling in a couple of others but um, I'll do that probably tomorrow or, yeah, well it'll have to be tomorrow really. Okay, so I'm alright with, I'm alright with the big handles and the, and the wheels, it's just this one here I'm a bit with this hand, so um, yeah, but we'll see how we go anyway. I went alright the last time, so hopefully I can stick with it and just grin and bear the pain. It normally takes two or three days for the um, for the steroids to kick in. So, um, and then by the time they kick in, it's time to stop taking them. <laughs> so, uh, I don't like taking them, but fortunately, I've got it. Okay, now this is getting fitted with a um, well, it's having a 27 by 18 socket put in it, so I'd imagine it's a 26, 27 mil knot that he's going to be putting in it. So it will be going down to um, Sir John to get the knot fitted. Okay, I'm just going to get this started and then I'll take a measurement because like I said we don't have the graduated measurements on this one so that's 21 and I want 8, oh, sorry that's yeah 21 18 would be 39 less 1 so 38 I need to take that into it's probably still spinning a little bit fast That'll do it. So I'll need to clean up the top of the um, the handle blank as well. Okay, so we can take that back out the way now. For now, anyway, uh, we'll get rid of that. And I'll just set that down there for now, actually. Okay. Well, the sound level's okay. Music's between tracks at the moment, I think, but um, it looked okay there before.
It's got a nasty um, groove in it. How has that happened? What's caused that? I wonder. Well, it's coming out. check and see what depth we've got. Yeah, so I'll need to go in a little bit deeper. But that's fine because I gotta I gotta make the hole bigger anyway. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll um, turn this around. <laughs> I'm just going to see what the height is for this. Yeah, that's not too bad. We'll slot down. I'm just going to put a um, 27mm mark on that now. Probably needs to be up a touch for that. Forcing a bit again as well. So let's move that back out. And we want to get 18 mil. So it's not much. Yeah, we're at 17, so we've got to go in another mil. Hang on. Okay. So we'll get rid of this now. And we'll stick that in the way up there. Along with that. And now we'll just clean out that last little bit in the bottom. Speed it up at the same time.
Right, we'll just check that for 27. Tiny little bit undersized, so we'll go again. Let's take a smidge off. Just lent on the brake, didn't I? Ah, oh, no strength in my hand. Right, um, I want a tiny little bit of sandpaper. That won't matter. Let's take off that sharp edge. That'll do it. If anything, just a, still a, just a touch, eh? We'll go again. And I think what I'll do is I'll give this a touch with the diamond card as well. I'll take you in closer sh shortly, guys. Bear with me. Right. So we'll put you into um, camera two there. And we'll just move this picture in picture. We'll put that to cam three. So you can see what's going on there. And that needs to go up just a touch. That's better. And we should still have 18 there, yep. Okay, that's that part done. Right, let's see what we can do around here now. We'll bring that up a touch to start with. And we'll get the tool, it's the um, live center in there as well now. Now that we've got the nice short tool rest. Okay. No, um handle kinda hides that shot, doesn't it? Um in a fashion now. We might swap them over, so we'll go um We'll go camera three and we'll go picture in picture two, like that. 
And then we'll go back to the chat. Bram, how are you, buddy? Welcome back. Yeah, chat's working as far as I can see, mate. So, we'll try going Have a look at that. to go in a little bit more. Take that down in size too, I think. But I might do the um, hollowing first to start the lotus shape. I need the tool rest to be a bit higher. Right, um, so just nice and gently now, probably still, still need a little bit more height.
Try the um, skew just to round that last bit over and blend that carbon. Be a bit uh, jittery because we're still not quite round yet at that particular point, but we will be. still go a little bit more hollow as well to give it a stronger sort of lotus shape trying to get that last little bit of Y. Once I get that, I'm happy. So I think we need to still hollow a little bit more as well. Just a tiniest little bit. but I think it's the bearing in the, um, in the live centre. It's been a little bit noisy for a while now. 
least I'm sure that's what it is. Take that away. Yeah, it's gone. So it's the bearing in the, um, the live centre. On it must be on its last legs. Nearly got it. That'll do it. The rest will come out with sandpaper. What are we doing now? Um, so we've got that. Okay, so I'm going to have a quick look at this because this is what we're replicating. And I think we've got that pretty much down part there. Probably just need to round that lip over a little bit more. Tidy up in there. And I'll have a look, make sure we've got no tool marks in there. Oh, this is a. This is a different top. That's all right. That's going to give it a nice, interesting look. Might not be the look he wants. That must not have been a solid black. Anyway, we'll soldier on. And we'll see what we end up with. And if it's not suitable, I'll need to do another one. Right, so we've got that there now, so we need to go in there and hollow that now. So we want a little V. We want a little V in there. So probably more like that though. I 
and that really needs to have a centre mark, which is probably about there. Right, we'll bring the tail stock in again. So she need to go right down. Not as low as that though. Probably about there.
Right. So I think we've got the shape down pat. So it's very, very similar to this one. Um, so as you can see, side by side there. And not too bad. This one's slightly bigger, but then it's getting fitted with a bigger knot. So I've just proportioned it just slightly bigger. But the issue, of, the issue I've got is I thought this was a pure blank, uh, pure black blank, and it's not. We've got a bit of a clear section in here, so um, it's obviously black, but it's been, it's had something else. I must have been pouring it for something else. And um, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to finish it now. And if it's not what the customer wants, if he doesn't like it, then I'll have to put another, put another knot in it and move this on to someone else. So, because he did want a black top, and it, the blank looked black, um, and it was a smaller blank that I had in the box, so I presumed it was um, black looking at it, it looked like black. I do have more of the, um, the Tasmanian barrel as well, so it's not a big deal. Just means I've got to make another one. But he's not, it's not going to be available for a couple of months anyway, so um, like I said, it's no big deal, but if he does like this one, then he can have this one. It'll be different, that's for sure. Bit of clear in the top. Well, it's got clear, but it's got black spirally in it, so... Um, Too fast as well for sanding. What am I doing? Okay, that's coming, shaping up nicely. we got a quiet stream tonight.
So what we'll be doing with this one is we'll be um, finishing the top section, so the, um, the resin part. We'll be sanding that, finishing in it. And then we'll, once we turn it around to part off the bottom, the, part it off at the bottom, we'll then finish the bottom and then we'll um, see a finish the uh, wooden section of the handle. Okay, I think that'll do the first grip. We 
way so I can get a little bit more in there. That'll do us. No, that's that one, that one, that one, and then that one in that order. So how are you, buddy? Who else have I missed? Have I missed anybody else? Sam's back. See the numbers are up a little bit to what they were earlier. Must have picked up another couple. I'm good, Sam. I'm good, mate. How are you? Other than my rheumatoid again, my right hand's stuffed again. I've had to go back on the steroids. Although, now that I've started using it, it seems to be freeing up, but it'll probably be later on that I'll pay for it again when I go to bed. And I can't take any more steroids until tomorrow morning, so... Um, No, I'm good. I might end up going back with a core script in that section there actually. S slow it down a little bit more. And I might even get fresh bit. Uh, 
that's better, that looks nice. I thought I had a bit of tear out, torn grey, and I should have bloody remembered. I used the carbide, but um, it's not actually tear out, it's actually in the, in the grind. It's like a pattern in the grind. Which is very pleasing, actually. It's going to look quite nice, the swirling. Right, um, now I'll go back to this one. And I might even use a fresh one of that as well. So that's the second. I think I got these mixed up again. Oh no, that one's all right. Now that was the rough. We want this one now. Now, I've done a bit of stabilising the other night. You've probably seen some of the pictures I put up in the um, Patreon page. Um, we'll talk about that later, I think. Lovely piece of timber. This is um, from the same as the one I done some time ago with the um, the Tasmanian myrtle with the bird's eye in it. It come up really nice. Um, can't remember which what, which handle it was. Now I've done that many of them, but um, there was one that I used a piece off of this same piece and I made a handle and it come up really nice. In actual fact, that's what made the fella that's getting this one wanted, he specified that he wanted a piece of that same timber of had it.
Alright, um, keep that there. Just roll it over the round there now. Get the chap back up so we can see what you uh, guys are up to in there. Oh, Amber's back. Amber, witchy woman, how are you? Welcome back. Sorry about the compressor. Won't be on long. I'm good, Amber, I'm good. As you can see, sanding, 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 sanding. that one, now we're onto this one.
Yeah, the protests here, mate, are next to nothing. You get, the media gets a hold of about 20 people in a group and call it a protest. There's been very little here in the way of protest. They had some in Melbourne then, because they were in strict lockdown. But Queensland's not really had much at all here. But like I said, the media see a group of 20 people protesting and they, they blow it out to make it look monstrous, you know? We've had nothing here like what you guys have had over you, why? I mean, even, you know, the coronavirus itself, I mean, I think Melbourne's had it the worst and they're, they're still only up to about 700 and something deaths and, it's, and the majority of those deaths are all elderly out of nursing homes. You know, and the people in their 80s and 90s, there's not been anywhere near as many people in the lower age brackets that have, um, you know, the coronavirus is impacted on, it's, it's very minimal. And you guys are up in hundreds of thousands over there, so... Australia's still got a very, very small population and, and you know, I think the population's got a lot to do with it. Now, obviously, if we had a much larger population, then the numbers would have been much, much higher. Um, and the other thing that I don't like about the way the media is reporting it, they don't always report how many tests they've done. So you've got no idea what the, you know, when they give you the daily figures of new, new viruses, you don't know what it relates to, um, because you don't know how they've been testing, or how many they've tested to get the figure that they've got. So it's a bit of a farce, really. Yeah, exactly, Grey Dog. That's what they're good at, aye. Making a story out of nothing. Somebody gets to keep the job a little bit longer because they found something to report on, you know? It's crazy.
who's talking about what? Changing times? What have I missed? This piece was a special piece that I bought from a fella down, down that way. Um, it wasn't a big piece of martel, but it's got some nice bird's eye in it. Um, I mean, it is a ball, but it's got some bird's eyeing in it. And um, for the small piece that I got, I think it was about $70. So, um, you know, timber's getting really expensive now, eh? Especially if you want really nice stuff. I mean, having worked with timber all my life, I mean, timber you used to be able to pick up pretty cheap, eh? But not anymore. Not unless you know someone. And even then, it's getting the good stuff, you know? I'm lucky I've got a fair stash out the back, more nice timbers underneath my patio pergola, I got a fair bit of nice timber there, some of it's no, not suitable for brushes but some of it's um, suitable for other things, but I've got a lot of it out there that's suitable for brushes, which is good. that. Alright, we're on to the last dry. It's taking a fair while to sand this one. It's got a bit of detail in it. That grit sounds rough again. Hope I didn't mix them up. I think I might have. That's the worst with this stuff because it's not got any markings on it, so you can't tell what grid it is just by picking it up and having a look on the back. It's got nothing there. But it feels coarse, so yeah, I think I might go with this one again for a while. Actually, I'll get a fresh piece of fine.
we'll go with a fresh piece of fine, or the 600, I should say, 400, 600. 600. See if that's getting the scratches out. Yeah, not too bad. You wait till you see this with a CA in it, it's going to pop. Some of those colours will come right out in that martel. Right, we'll just get into this one now. I don't know what we've got going on with this on the top. It's definitely not black though, so I may have to do this handle again. Or do it, well, do another one the same as this, but make sure it's uh, black. We'll see how it goes. Lucky I've got more of the timber, that's all I can say. Right, that's the last of that. Um, so I'll get the fresh water. And I'll grab the pads. So bearing in mind, I only really want to sand 
with the wet, the top section. I don't want to go down into the timber at all at this point in time. Now the wood's going to get CA finish put on it, so I'm going to do that when I turn that around. Um, and then that gets um, wet sanded once it's coated. I don't want to put a lot of water into the barrel. This is, isn't stabilised barrel, so... It's just a different way of finishing it. And I can access the whole bottom section of the handle once this is back on the chuck from the other end. If I start doing the CA from this end here, I'm going to end up getting CA on the resin, which I don't want to do. Pretty cool. But the customer did want um, black, so the customer gets what the customer wants. If he's not, if he doesn't like this, we'll do another one. I'll show you a couple in a minute, stabilised. You saw the picture I put up on Patreon, Sam, didn't you? With the timber, the rotten timber. That was all powdery. I couldn't pick that up real easy because anywhere you touched it, it just fell to bits. It was rotten and spalted. So I'll show you what I've done with that. And then it'll get cast in resin, coloured resin as well, to fill all the holes. But I'll show you that in a minute and I'll explain a couple of things to you. Now 
Well, it can make some timber that's totally unusable, usable. And sometimes you can get some really nice looking timber out of it. So, let me just bring these up. And I'll go to camera one for you. You remember I put that picture up with the, uh, with the timber that was all powdery and crumbly and falling apart? Well, that's now been stabilised. Okay. So these are spalted, but the, it had gone beyond spalting. It had started to rot. And as you can see, there's a lot of holes and bug, bug holes and cavities in them, which are now going to get cast in a coloured resin. So we'll get the timber that would have been totally unturnable because it would have just disintegrated. It just felt the power of the minute you picked it up. When I put it on the scales, when it was um, just dry, before it was um, stabilised, um, it weighed 260 grams for the six pieces and then when I was finished stabilizing them the total weight for the six pieces was 900 grams so all that extra weight has been absorbed into the fibers of the timber and made that timber rock hard now um, the only thing that's coming off it now is, is, um, is little bits of resin um, which happened to have gone in my sanding bowl so I'll get rid of the lime um, so these blanks now are saturated in resin, so they'll, they'll be able to be turned now, but what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to cast them in some coloured acrylic, so the coloured acrylic will fill up all the holes, and then we'll turn them into, into handles, okay? And some of them are pretty bad, like that one's been eaten away, you can see that one's been eaten away totally inside, but that'll give a nice effect once I put uh, resin in there, coloured resin. And that handle is... It's as hard as a rock now. Um, if I'd have done that before, it would have just disintegrated, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's... So that was the ones i done. And I posted up a couple of pictures of them on the Patreon page. So they were totally rotten, powdery, crumbly. Now, these ones here are also pieces of barrel, right? And I've got a heap of them on the, sob, on the bandsaw sitting there that I've just been finished stabilising. So if I go to camera two again, I'll show you close up. You can see there's the excess of the stabilising when it's been put in the oven. But this barrel has absorbed. Before I put it in, in the resin, it was actually a light colour. Now it's a dark colour because it's absorbed the resin inside. But they're totally solid now. Um, they, were, they were good barrel anyway but it's been stabilised now, so it's impervious to taking on water. It won't take on water, and that's why you can use it in shaving brushes and stuff and set knots and that in it. But CA finish is only an outer coating. If the outer coating gets damaged, then it can lip water into the timber. The water gets in behind the CA and then it goes milky and it can cause a lot of problems. But as long as it doesn't get, the outer coating doesn't get damaged, it'll stand up to anything. CA is a, a nice, hard, tough finish. That's why we put it on pens and stuff like that, you know? And that's why I put it on these shaving brushes because um, the actual handle is not gonna come in contact with an awful lot of water. It's normally where the knot sets because the knot sits damp as well. But with, these, with this handle, this handle having a nice... I mean, it could have been stabilised as well, but it's just another lengthy process to put the blank through for one blank, so... Um, unless I could have done it in with other ones, you know? But I already had this set up, ready to go. Um, but the CA finish is just very hard, very tough, and very long-lasting, and the oils in your hands don't affect it. Um, but if it does get chipped, dropped, damaged, and chipped, then um, it can let water into the wood and then you can end up with issues. So that's why I don't um, do a lot of CA finishes. There's nothing wrong with it, but that's why I don't do a lot of CA finishes. But then Grey Dog does a lot of CA finishes on his timber and doesn't have a problem. So, you know, it's, um, like I say, CA is very tough.
Yeah, well, it's taken a long time to go rotten, grey dog. <laughs> that stuff was um, laying in the ground. It was it was put in specifically to spoil, but it had been left go too long. And it just started to rot, and the bugs got into it and started eating it away. And so now it's even more expensive, mate. It's got natural critter holes in it, you know? That are soon, soon going to be filled with their resin. <laughs> it's true, though, eh? People pay more for that kind of stuff. But it's having the right stuff, the stuff that's going to look good. That's the important part. How are we going time-wise? Now in 45, jeez. It's taken a while, we're still going to see you finish it. We might end up coming back to this one. I wish I knew what I made this blank for, the, the um, black with the clear in it, because um, I can't remember doing it, and it just looked black when I um, when I pulled the blank out. So I thought, oh, I might as well use that, save me casting another one. And um, it's black with clear or something. It's quite effective in the handle though, but um, whether the customer will want it or not is another thing. And he's quite within his rights to say no. If he wants black, he'll get black. Yeah, it's a fairly long process though, Sam. It's not something, I mean, I can go through the steps of it, but I can't... Um, I've got some photographs that I can probably put up on the Patreon page that might let you see what goes on. It's done under vacuum in a, in a pot um, with stabilizing resin, which is special resin that cures on heat application and binds all the fibers together. Um, you've got to dry the, dry the, take all the moisture out of the timber first. So it's a, that's the first process. So you find suitable wood you might think the wood's dried. You might have had it in your shed for, you know, years, but it's still not dry. So you need to dry it out in a little, um, I, I use a little um, humidifier for um, food. And what I can do is I can take the trays out, put my wood in there and then shut the front up and then just let it go for hours and hours and hours. And it just, it's a gentle heat under fan. And that basically takes all the moisture out of the wood and then from there, you um, you take the wood and you, you put it in a pot with stabilizing resin. And um, then what you do is you put it under vacuum. So you use a vacuum pump. And the vacuum pump gets attached to the lid of the chamber. The timber gets submersed in the resin with a, an anti-float plate on top of it. In the, in the resin and the resin must be over the top of the, the timber so that it's fully submersed all the time and then you put it under vacuum 
and you wait until all the bubbles stop. And that's it pulling the air out of the wood and pulling the resin in. And then once the bubbles stop, you leave it sit, still saturating in the resin for a, depends how long it's under vacuum it's to the bubble stop as to how long you have to leave it saturating. And then once you've left it saturating for however long, you then take it and you put it in an oven and you bake it at about 185, 190 degrees for uh, 45 minutes. And then you take it out and you've got stabilised timber. And that's the process. Right, and um, where's my paper towels? There they are. So you can see how much time and effort and work goes into stabilising a piece of wood for a for a, um, a shave brush handle, you know. There's a lot of lot of time, a lot of effort. A lot of process goes into that. Right, we'll get rid of that water for a minute. Because we won't need that again, hopefully, until the um, until we start the CA finish. I'm quite liking that, actually. Um, It's quite nice, it really is. Right, I'll get a little bit of methylated spirits now. Now, what camera are we on? Oh yeah, we're on that one. We might go back to uh, camera three. So you can see that black with a clear, and then it's got the smoky sp black spirals up through here. It's more solid black on the bottom, and then we've got a little bit of solid black up the top as well. And we can see a bit of clear up the top as well. It's quite nice, actually. But now we'll um, just hit this timber with a bit of methylated spirits. And that just helps clean the grain out. You can see all the muck that I've got on that rag coming out of the grain. Just all the sanding dust. So that gives the grain more depth when you take all that um, dust out. I thought that was actually a water stain there, but it's not, it's actually in the grind. It's a lovely piece of wood. Right, that'll do that. So now I think what we can do is we can turn it around. We can leave all the buffing till last. We will turn it round and we can pat it off. So we'll get rid of all this again now. I'll just drop it over there because it'll get swept up tomorrow. Um, I might blow that clean. Okay, we'll turn this around, so we'll grab the uh, keys, because we're pretty much done there now. And we'll 
take this smaller chuck off. Um, and I need I'll sit there for now, we'll need this one now. So you got the dimensions that I gave you earlier, uh, Grey Dog, of this chuck. The pin jaws. Um, 25 mil from here to here. And they're 23 mil in that way in the diameter. Um, and I need the handle. I'll just check and see that that's spinning fairly true, which it is. That'll do that. I shall put that down in case the vibration causes it to fall off. We can bring in our tool rest again and we'll probably have to drop it right down. <sighs> we'll get a height for that shortly and we'll bring the uh, tail stock in. Now I've already got, if I go to camera two, <sighs> you'll see I've already got the center hole in there from when I turned it originally. Um, I think that handle's in the Y. Yeah, the handle's in the Y. You can see the centre mark I've got there, so this will go back straight into that centre mark, and in that way I know I've got that pretty much centred up properly. So it's a good thing, good habit to get into making sure that you've got centre marks in things when you can. You can't always do it, but most of the time you can. Okay, I think that height should do us okay. We're a little bit there, but not, not a lot. Not enough to worry it. And I think that's a little bit blunt. So we'll give that a hit with a diamond card. That's better. You can always hear when the tools are working hard or when they're doing it easy. You know, you can hear them cut. You just got to listen. Waste piece. Put that over there, that over there, get this out of the way. Now we'll take that out and we'll put the bit in again. Right. We'll slow it down. Now I'm going to go in with the 25 mil bit here, but I'm then going to go in and make it a little bit bigger because I had an issue the last time when I put the CA finish on and the coin was a little bit tight to go in the bottom. And I 
think I need to replace that 25 mil fossna bit as well because it's um, it's burning its way through the timber. So I just want to check that depth. Probably still need to go a little bit more. That's better. That'll do it. Okay, um, we'll set that there. And we'll go with the, the spindle gouge. Let's put a little bit more speed in it. Needs to go down. Too bad. We'll just take a little bit of a right now. I am going to go in with the skew and just open it up a little bit so we allow for some CA. That'll do that. Okay, so now we need to just sand that up a bit now, on the bottom. Right. Thank <laughs> you. 
usual, how are you buddy? Right, that should do that, I think. I'll give it a little touch of hand with that one. Okay, so now I shall go and get my CA. I'm going to probably have to get more CA actually. Um, I've got very little left in this now. I don't need to get more activator. The joys, the joys. And uh, we need some paper towel. Now this will probably take a fair few coats, so if we start running out of time guys, um, I might do another stream of this one on um, Thursday to finish. And then we can, um, I'll find something else to do as well. How does that sound? Dripping CA all over my life. I should put a rag under there. the other end of this tile and I'll put a little bit onto the tile and then we'll seal up inside where the coin is. And that way the water won't take, the, the sorry the water, the, um, the wood won't take any water in there because the CA will soak into the fibres and just seal off the, um, seal it off for, for water. We'll get another little bit in there. And that'll do that. It's well and truly sealed in there now, as you can see. Now we've just got to get it all evenly coated. And um, Just grab another towel. Where did, I put the, where did I put the paper towels? There they are. Got a little bit of um, CA on the acrylic, but that'll that'll polish out with the um, with wets. But we've got a little run of CA around there as well. But um, again, the 
it's not too bad. Set up moving. So we've got a natural little um, crack in the wood here, it's, it may have been where there's been a really soft piece of wood or something in there at one stage, you can see there's another bit up here but that, that one's still in there. Um, got a little bit there, but we'll keep going with the CA, we'll build it up and these ones here will need to be all built up so that we don't end up with any hollows or holes or anything like that so we've got to make sure it's all filled up with CA and then when we give it a light sand over we get it back to flat nice flat finish and then we um, then we're ready to sand it all again that's looking not too bad. We've got still a couple of little holes there that just need to fill up so it's just a case of getting enough coats on it really um, to let it fill. Getting there. Fresh piece of towel after this one. that over there.
I think I've super, new, super glued one of my nails to my finger. <laughs> Feels strange. Not to worry. See how it's looking. Yep, they're all starting to fill up. How long have we been going? That's two hours twenty. I think we'll go and we'll um, we may have to come back and do this one later, or I'll finish it off camera. I think because um, it's going to take a bit longer it needs to be all sanded again as well. And I don't want to bore you all with sanding again for another half an hour or so. So um, I'll get another couple of coats on it and then um, probably call the stream quits at about um, half past or so. That sound fair enough guys? You can see where I've gone up onto the resin with the um, with the CA, but that'll just polish out with the wet the wet grits, buff out. The main ones are I want to get that a little bit more filled under here. These ones are all pretty much filled now, maybe a little bit more. So just a couple of light coats on that, I think, and then that'll pretty much do that, I think. Um, Just want to get a nice, good thick coating on it, so it's well protected. I'm going to have to get more super glue out too because I'm. This one's done. But you get the you get the gist of that one now. You can see that it's coming up quite nicely. And uh, when I compare it to to this one, if I can get that in picture, probably not. So not bad, considering I only had to look at that a couple of times. We've got it pretty much spot on. So, what do we think? I think we'll come back to it. Might get another. I think I've got more CA there. Um, just let me go and have a quick looky. See what I've got. I'd like to just get another couple of coats on it before we call it quits. And then. Um, I 
nothing in that one. I think a lot of my glues have gone off, actually. That's a thick. That one might be all right. Okay, it's a little, it's thin, but it's thick. We'll see how it goes. Try it. Um, might be too thick to spread properly, but I'll have to go inside and get some more thin. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Definitely filled now. He's got a bit more on the bottom to do. It's much thicker than I would like. Yeah, it's nearly there now, I think. Still a little bit there that needs to be filled, so I can do that one or two ways. That's better. All right, guys, I think we'll call it quits at that, eh? What do you think? We'll call it quits, we'll finish it on um, the next stream, eh? And I'll, I'll fit something else in the next stream. Um, just to fill in the, uh, fill in the short time, because um, basically, I might even get this one sanded off, offline. And then, um, Basically, it'll just be a case of buffing it up, which I might even do, do offline. I might come back and show you this one finished in the next stream. Um, if not, we'll finish it in the stream and then I'll find something else to put in the stream. And over the next day or two, I'll, um, I'll schedule in some, where are we? Over the next day or two, I'll schedule in some other, other streams as well. And I'll try and mix in a couple of other things. Like I've got a couple, as I mentioned before, I've got a couple of blanks that I need to cast. Um, so I've got black. This one's going to be a tricky one, actually. The, it's a black handle, and it's going to have an orange stripe up the middle of it. Um, so I'll probably end up having to cast that as a black blank and an orange blank, and then cut it, sand them, and then glue them together, and then make the handle. It's the only way I can get the um, clean lines in it, I think. Because I think if I pour it, if I pour black, let it set, pour orange, let it set, um, 
I mean, I could possibly do it that way, but getting a line bang in the middle too would be the would be the challenge. So anyway, I'm going to have to put a little bit more thought into that one, but um, and I'll work out whether I'm going to have to cast an orange and a black, or whether I cast it as one blank. Um, so we've got that one to do, and then I've got another another one to do, which is purple, white, and light blue. So that'll be one that we can cast. That's going to have a rhodium fitted in it as well. Um, so that'll be sent off to Sarjan. Same with this one. Um, and so will the other one that I've got, the, the black with the orange band in it. That's getting a rhodium fitted to it too. So all rhodium handles. Um, but we'll come back to them anyway. Yeah, thanks Amber. Um, We'll come back to them, but like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll schedule some up in, in, um, in YouTube so that you'll be able to see what, what's actually up and coming. And I might, I might even throw in a couple of pens again, because the, the pens were quite light to last time. And we might try something else. I'll find a few other things, but I, you know, we've got a bit of casting to do. Once I get the uh, rhodium knot for T-Man's handle, um, T-Man's handle will get done. I've got it sitting here, and I think that's going to throw some really nice colour and this one, I sent a couple of pictures to uh, to T Man and put them up on the Patreon site um, the other day, and um, we've since changed that this is going to be a taller handle now. Um, if T Man, if you're still there, mate, if you just come back to me, if you've got any particular shape that you think you would like, and um, we can go with that. And this is going to make a stunning handle, actually. I'm really, really pleased with the blank on this one. So. Um, this was one of the ones that I cast in the new mould that I made, the, um, um, the, the silicon mould. And um, it turned out really well and this was a stabilised barrel as well. Like I'm looking at that and you know you can see it's just shiny on the bottom. Um, don't know if you can see it in the camera there. But that's just because it's stabilised and it's been cut clean you know. But anyway, so we've got a few, and I've got another one here that I'm going to throw in as well. This was another casting that we done some time ago as well with the multicolours in it, um, with a black top. It's a fairly long blank, but it'll get shortened down. So I'm going to throw that one in somewhere as well and turn that one, because I think that one's going to look quite nice as well. Um, something different, you know. And then we've got heaps of barrel there. We've got that rotten timber that we'll probably cast. Well, actually, we might even cast some of that, but the only thing is I can only do one at a time because I only have one mould, uh, one silicon mould that will take those blanks. So I'll only be able to cast one of them at a time and then they'll have to go in under pressure as well um, so that the resin gets forced in everywhere. But they should, um, well I'm hoping that I can get some nice blanks out of them rotten dingy pieces of wood. So um, anyway, let me um, get back to it. Um, so yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed it again, guys. It's a bit long stream, but like I said, it, we've ended up with a nice handle, but it just needs a little bit more work, and I don't want to go on all night doing it, so um, we'll come back to it and do it. But yeah, it's, it's pretty nice, actually. Um, and it'll get a coin in the bottom. Anyway, we'll see you again on Thursday. So once again, take care, stay safe, don't do anything I wouldn't do, I'm going to shut the shed door down and we'll open it again on Thursday night and we'll see you all then, eh? Until then, stay safe, have fun guys, eh? We'll catch you later. Ta-ra. Got rid of that YouTube one and we need to get rid of that one now. See yas.